There are many new exciting drilling applications in the world of Delmag, where new technology and years of experience have blended together. Delmag has been around since 1922 and has been building drilling rigs for at least 30 years. Delmag is located near Stuttgart, Germany and has roughly 100 employees. It is currently owned by ABI, another manufacturer of specialized foundation equipment. So it can truly be said that we know foundations. In the USA, Delmag drilling rigs are supported by ABI in Benicia, California. Here a full workshop, post shop, spare parts store and the crew of technicians are able to support the rigs. The rigs themselves have been involved in some tough jobs with remarkable results. The Delmag rigs have a rock drill setting that prevents cavitation of the motors by limiting RPM to prevent sudden increases in speed of the motors when rock breaks off. The auger heads used are progressive augers and we can see that the head has drilled small chunks out of the rock and not powder. This means it is cutting the hard material and not grinding itself to death. This explains the long life in hard drilling conditions. Delmag rigs are used in soft soils as well. In Houston Port in Texas, soil mixing in contaminated soils was done with an 8-foot soil mix tool. A large diameter was used to trap as much contaminants as possible with one column. The slow rock setting was used to begin with so grout would not fly everywhere. As the auger penetrated deeper the RPM was increased. At another job site, piles needed to be installed in contaminated soils. A Delmeg RH-130 was used to drill 50 feet full displacement piles with lost tips. These tips are left in the ground so that the cage can be placed inside the dry empty casing. A full displacement auger was used and has reverse flighting to prevent material from coming back to the surface when extracting. Delmag drilling rig had to drill through contaminated soils and therefore the client wanted as little spoils as possible. To turn the auger an RH-130 with 130,000 foot-pounds of torque and 33,000 pounds of crowd was used. Without the crowd and the weight of the rig to transfer the crowd it would not be possible to drill full displacement piles. Piles drilled were 16 inch OD, 50 foot long through sands, clays and compact gravels at the tip. Drilling speeds were kept to a moderate pace in order to ensure that the displacement was done properly and resulted in removing less spoils when extracting. Drilling with moderated speeds resulted in a complete pile being done in 28 minutes but could have been done in as little as 20 minutes if time was the most critical factor. 
The rig is very stable despite the high crowd and torque used and it is noticeable how little vibration or movement there is in the mast and turntable. Once the required depth has been reached, the top coupling is removed and the reinforcement lowered. The rebar is installed and the coupling is reattached. Concrete is then continuously pumped while the air that the concrete displaces is allowed to escape through two valves located at the top of the casing. Once concrete starts to come out of these valves, they are shut. The extraction of the casing then begins and a small amount of concrete is pumped to allow for the void left behind by the casing. The full displacement pile obtained twice the capacity in the same ground conditions as a 16 inch square precast driven pile that it had replaced. Further cost savings were obtained because there was a surprisingly low overbreak of just 1%. An electronic monitoring system was provided to record the flow and pressure of the concrete, the depth of the pile, and to record the torque and crowd of the rig. The torque and crowd recordings, together with the depth reading, allowed engineers to verify that the pile had penetrated far enough into the dense gravel layers at pile tip. Measuring concrete flow and pressure assured the engineers that the correct amount of concrete had been pumped into the hole. Both these two cost savings were due to the compaction of the surrounding ground by the full displacement nature of the pile. The client also obtained two more advantages over driven piles with a Delmag rig. There was no vibration and the greatest noise levels were generated by the engine at a low 75 decibels. Even with the drill head at the highest level of the mast, with the weight of the drill string hanging off it, the rig is still very stable even when moving around the terrain. Another method used to case holes is a part displacement pile. A sacrificial tip and a casing with narrow flighting are used. Here most of the material is displaced and a small amount comes to the surface. This method took only 8 minutes to drill a 30 inch diameter hole 40 foot deep in caving sands and requires substantial pullback forces as well to extract the auger. The final job site we are going to look at shows the drilling combination of Kelly and casing. A secant wall was designed with 36 inch piles in running sands near a railway line. To ensure that no settlement will take place, the Delmag rigs had to drill in casing and then drill them out with the auger. A precast template was built to ensure correct positioning and precise overlap of the piles. The casings were installed in sections and bolted together. Once pile depth had been reached, the cage was installed in the dry hole and a tremie pipe placed over it. The concrete truck poured its load to fill enough to allow one short casing section to be pulled. This is done to ensure that no cage movement occurs when the casing is removed. In addition, it makes it easier to extract the total length of the casing in the ground with the first pull. If all the concrete is poured at once, there is the chance that the cage may travel up with the casing due to the pressure exerted by the concrete at the bottom of the pile on the cage and casing. The friction caused by filling the casing with concrete may also prevent extraction of the